folks, how's it going? It's James here, welcome to another video. Uh, in the background, you may frankly be able to hear this record. This is the Oscar Peterson Trio, and we get requests. I found this uh, a couple of days ago. I went up to uh, take some stuff to our local kind of pets rescue place, and as frequently happens, I go in there with an armful of stuff, and I come out there with LPs. They had a box of mainly utter crap on the floor, uh, but this was one record that I, I salvaged from the box. Uh, it cost me uh, one pound. Uh, this record uh, is from 1964 and um, it is just a lovely album. It's on Verve. I've got a fair few Oscar Peterson records, so uh, it was nice to add that one to the collection. And um, also from the same uh, box of Tat, I was delighted to find a copy of No Sense of Sin by the Lotus Eaters. This is their debut album, 1984, on Arista. Uh, if you're going to know any of the songs from this record, uh, you will know. Wait a sec. Oops. There we go. Uh, the famous song off this is da, 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 The First Picture of You. This is a beautiful album. I'm getting more and more into that kind of soft, pastel-coloured 80s, melancholy English kind of pop music. I picked up... Um, copy of the, one of the Lilac Time albums a while ago, loved that as well. Uh, yeah, just a, a really great record and um, I would recommend uh, you pick that up if you see it. I've, I've not seen their records around a lot, but um, yeah, just, just a great one to find. The Lotus Eaters, No Sense of Sin. Okay, this one was uh, Mail Order. I think it was, it was eBay or Discogs. It was a record I wanted. This is Bruce Woolley in the Camera Club. Uh, and um, Bruce Woolley, amazing career, he co-wrote uh, Video Killed the Radio Star, which ended up being on the first album by The Buggles. He also co-wrote the song Clean Clean, which is off that album. The original version of Video Killed the Radio Star and Clean Clean are both on this record, uh, which came out in 1979. Uh, this is a promo copy, which I didn't realise when I was buying it. And um, it's very different from The Buggles versions. I mean, the Buggles turned those songs into these very kind of elegant, um, modernist sounding, very shiny, fair light dominated pop music. But Bruce Woolley and the Camera Club, it was much more kind of scratchy, uh, sort of guitar y new wave stuff. So it's certainly very interesting to hear the original version of, you know, such a, a massive hit. I mean, he never went on to be in the Buggles, but, um, you know, you can hear that his influence was definitely in the band. Really fascinating, and he went on to have this amazing career. He co-wrote a lot of the tracks on the Grace Jones album, Slave to the Rhythm, and he went on to work with all kinds of people. He won Grammy Awards, but he's, he's never really become a kind of household name. Maybe if he'd been in the Buggles, you know, things might have worked out differently for him. But uh, certainly a great, a really great British uh, left-field pop album, and uh, one which is uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't done already. Bruce Woolley and the Camera Club. I recommended this to Vinyl Collector James. As soon as I heard it and put it on, I thought James would love this. And James being James, he ordered it immediately and um, he got back to me and said he had enjoyed it. Because I think it's got that kind of classic British electronic sound to it. Um, in this band also, I should uh, mention, there was the uh, notable British pop composer and uh, sometime pop star, Thomas Dolby is on this record as well, so yeah, I, I had to have it. Um, I, I got sick of it not being in my collection, so I bought a copy. Okay, a complete change of pace now. Uh, this was found in my local antique centre. This is Julie Felix, uh, a name I was, I knew the name and I knew I'd seen her before. I realised after I bought the record, uh, she used to be on, there was a show on British TV in the 60s called The Frost Report, it was David Frost, and that's where a lot of the, uh, People who went on to be quite big names in comedy started, you know, people that were in the Monty Python team and so on. But it also uh, had a lot of good music on. They used to show a lot of good music stuff, a lot of, uh, you know, folk music and uh, quite big people used to be on there. I think the Kinks were on there and uh, The Who, Pete Townsend was on the show. And Julie Felix was a kind of presenter on the programme. She's actually American. She was a folk singer, but she moved to Britain in the 60s and just got this job on this TV show and she became a bit of a household name. And she's still going strong. She's, I think she's 90 years old now. 
and um, this record is really nice. It's a bit misleading because the track list on the album it does not match up with what's actually on the record. And I did notice that on the track list on the record it says it's got a version of The Last Thing On My Mind, uh, which I love. That's by Tom Paxton. There's a great version of that on the Second Move album. They did a big kind of uh, psych rock folk version of it. But it's not on this record, which is rather misleading. But there are some nice tunes on this. You've got The Needle of Death by Bert Yansk. When sorrow fills your heart Sadness hides the longing to be free When things go wrong each day You fix your mind to escape your misery Your troubled young life will make you turn to the needle of death. And you've got, um, uh, what's the other big song on this record? You've got a Pete Seeger song, uh, Space Girl. The person I thought of when I picked this album up actually was Doug, Fat City Vinyl, hello Doug, because I know he's, he's, he's quite fond of his folk and he picks up a lot of stuff by these kind of 60s um, interpreters and song songstresses. That's Julie Felix. Okay, again from the Antique Small, uh, I was delighted to find this by Joe Tex. Didn't have anything by him on vinyl. Classic um, 60s Southern Soul, you know, he was from Texas and uh, just great kind of smoky stuff. I was doing some research on him online and I didn't know this, but he actually, well, there was a bit of, um, there was a bit of debate over it, but he always claimed that he wrote the song Fever. Uh, which um, did not end up being credited to him, but he always maintained it was his song. Anyway, that's on Atlantic, um, but I couldn't leave that behind. It's in great, it's in great condition, and uh, it's got Ode to Billy Joe on there, which is a song I know uh, from uh, Bobby Gentry. Did a great version of that. It was the third of June, another sleepy, dusty, delta day. I was out chopping cotton and my brother was bailing hay. And then dinner time we stopped and walked back to the house to eat. Yeah. And mama hollered at the back door, y'all remember to wipe them dirty feet. Yeah. And then she said, I got some news this morning <laughs> from Choctaw Reed. This morning, Billy Joe McAllister jumped on the Tallahatchie Bridge. Love me some Joe, Joe Tex. Nice little run of Costello luck in the last few months. This is one of the ones uh, well, I, that I didn't have in my collection. I've still got a couple of gaps. I think Punch the Clock I still don't have a copy of. This is Almost Blue. This was the country album he made back in the 1980s, 1981, uh, in lovely condition. So I was delighted to get that into the collection. This was the album that came, I think it came with the warning sticker, did it? Saying, warning, uh, this album contains country music and so therefore may offend people with narrow minds or something like that. I think I'm right. Was it that record? Anyway. Yeah, glad to find it. Looking forward to digging into it. Costello. I think this was from Oxfam and it was a record that kind of caught my eye. Uh, because you don't see much 90s music uh, in the wild in Goodwill stores, you know, charity shops. This is the Dillons, who I didn't know. This record comes from that period in the 90s where everything went very kind of uh, retro 60s. It's got that kind of shuffly rhythm to it and the floaty vocals. You know, think, uh, think in Spiral Carpets and Early Blur. And um, it's, uh, it's not a mind-blowing album, but I've listened to it a few times and it's, I describe it as kind of highly listenable in its style. You can kind of hear why they never really broke big, uh, because the singer's voice ultimately just does not have enough personality to it. it, it you know, I mean, Damon Albarn, Blur came from that same kind of slightly floaty, retro, 60s kind of indie sound, but they had a very distinctive voice, you know, with Damon Albarn. 
I also don't think that the songwriting is uh, is as strong as a band such as the Inspiral Carpets. You know, you had some very very catchy kind of songs. It's sort of I don't want to kind of damn it with faint praise. It's a little bit second division, but it's it's also quite enjoyable because it's a kind of snapshot of that era, which is my era really. I was in my twenties in the nineties, and I can remember all that shuffly indie psychedelic kind of stuff. So uh, that was a kind of interesting thing to pick up. The Dylans. <laughs> Okay, so veering all over the place, uh, again from the Antique Small, bought for the princely sum of £3. This is uh, Sheila and B Devotion. I was delighted to find this. This, is, uh, this contains the track Spacer, which is my all-time favourite disco song. Uh, when both my sons were young, uh, I used to throw them around the room to it and they both used to love that game. Uh, I can't do it anymore, I put my back out if I did that. Uh, but um, this is, um, in all but name, this is Chic. You know, this is Nile Rogers. Uh, I've no idea who Sheila was, uh, but there she is. And uh, as far as I'm aware, you know, that's that's not the band who play on the album. It is Chic. It's got some great stuff on it. I mean, I love I love their songwriting. I love Nile Rogers and uh, Bernie Edwards' songwriting. It's just it's very pared down. It's very uh, it's very artful in its way. You know, I mean, they were. They were working in a medium which didn't have much artistic credibility, you know, and there'd been that big backlash in America against disco, you know, the whole disco sucks thing. And they found a way of doing a kind of form of disco which just transcended maybe the trashier elements. And uh, I think that's why you get people, you know, even people who don't like disco, who even hate disco, that they're forced to grudgingly admit uh, that Chic were mighty fine, and they were. So yeah, I was, I was really pleased to find that. Um, Spacer, uh, yeah, love it. That's on Atlantic. Okay, just a cheapie from the charity shop. Uh, bought this because it was in really good condition. It's a fame reissue. Don't hear much about this guy on the vinyl community. This is uh, Steve Harley, uh, a British singer-songwriter who signed to EMI at the same time that Queen did. And he always joked in later years. He said, you know, I signed to EMI at the same time as Queen and you know one of us became really hugely rich and successful but even though he was totally eclipsed by queen he did he did have a long run of chart hits the most famous song being um come up and see me make me smile which is one of the all-time great you know well-written british pop songs really really clever song i was in a band years ago that tried to cover it and it's not an easy song to cover you know he had that i think he had that kind of ambitious thing a lot of bands in the 1970s had, you know, think Queen, think 10CC. They were not just into doing three chord stuff, uh, but they were not prog or anything like that. But they were kind of, it's sort of like art pop, you know, think Bebop Deluxe and things like that. And um, yeah, just a nice thing to find. Steve Harley records do pop up a fair bit in the wild in the UK, but they're often a little bit kind of not really beaten up, but they're not often in good condition and uh, there seems to be rather a lot of them as well and I don't really want to get into seriously collecting Steve Harley uh, so um, so I thought a well looked after best of was the way to go. This was staring at me in the window of my local Oxfam when I walked past. It's a record that I'm very fond of. I had it on CD, still do. Uh, this is um, Journeyman by Eric Clapton from 1989 and um, it's a patchy album as is a lot of Clapton's, you know, later work. Didn't realise it was a gatefold, which I was quite uh, quite pleased about. And there's Eric there in his 1980s <laughs> Armani suit regalia. They all felt the need to get into those suits, didn't they, back in the 80s. This record features, um, there's two songs on this album that I absolutely love. One is Bad Love, uh, which I think has a riff that rivals Layla. Uh, 
it's a really really good riff it's it's really catchy it's just got Eric Clapton written all over it you know also the song Pretending which is which is a really good song as well it's written by Jerry Williams got a feeling he had to put that song on the album I think the record company didn't want to release the album until he got a couple of more commercial songs on there so um, he he recorded Pretending and uh, yeah it's one of it's one of Clapton's better latter day songs but um, it's a reasonably patchy album apart from that there's quite a dodgy version of uh, Hound Dog on this record which is which is not good at all really but um, I couldn't leave it in the window it was going cheap and it's, you know it's a record that I'm fond of from back in the day but, uh, now where did I get this one from ah I can see the receipt Oxfam Al Green Greatest Hits didn't have anything by Al Green on vinyl so thought I'd put that right uh, love me some Al. Shalala, here I am. I'm still in love with you. Tired of being alone. It's on London. Delighted to find that. Just a good Saturday night record, really. Um, yeah, Al Green, of course, he's now a preacher. He kind of, um, he renounced uh, the world of uh, secular music and he now preaches in a church in one of the southern states, I think. Not sure which. Um, but yeah, wonderful stuff. Al Green. Okay, so we're going to finish with La Creme de la Creme. Bought from the Antiques Mall and this is in great condition and I was so pleased to find it. This is uh, Sunflower by the Beach Boys. Another plug in my Beach Boys collection. So many gaps. I picked up Holland last year. I tend to find Beach Boys records at the rate of about, I don't know, one every three years, you know. Uh, so I was so pleased to find this one. It's an album I know, you know, I have it on CD. This came from a very difficult time in their career. I think they were breaking away from their record label, or they were having problems, you know, legal disputes. Brian Wilson had become addicted to various substances. Dennis Wilson had, had got involved with the, you know, the whole Charles Manson thing. There was lots of quite bad stuff going down, and uh, I think. This was the album where the other Beach Boys came a bit more centre stage and they all took a hand in writing the songs, you know, because Brian really wasn't capable of, of kind of leading the band anymore. So it became very collaborative. Uh, you know, you had songs by Dennis Wilson, songs such as Forever, you had Tears in the Morning by Bruce Johnson, Deirdre by Bruce Johnson, which is a great song. Just a great thing to find on the state side. It's a British pressing. I haven't established the date of it yet, but it's... Um, you know, it's, it's in lovely condition. It really is beautiful. Uh, and the final thing that I got, I was also absolutely delighted. Now, I've seen somebody show this, and I can't remember who it is, but this is a twofer of the band's first two albums. I already had uh, the second album, the Brown album, on vinyl, but I didn't have the first album on vinyl. Got it on CD. So... I grab this and uh, just just an incredible thing to find, you know. And I so nearly, I so nearly didn't go digging that day. I just thought to myself, oh, you know, I'll pop up there and see what's there, because you know I pay two pounds to get in. So I sometimes think, hmm, you know, I'm not sure I can be bothered. But I just went, and I'm pleased I did because I honestly was not expecting to find. Uh, to find the band's first album. I nearly didn't, well I nearly thought twice about it because there was a scuff mark uh, on the final song, I Shall Be Released. You can see a bit of marking on there and you probably can't see it on the on the camera but I could see that there was something there, like a ring of something that I thought was maybe going to give me problems. So I kind of rushed home and put it straight on the turntable even without giving it a proper clean and you know it's fine, it's absolutely fine. So um, yeah, just really really chuffed to find that. Uh, two two of the greatest all-time albums that ever were so influential you know massively influential on the Beatles massively influential on country rock as a whole virtually invented a genre with those two records and just wonderful musicianship you know Levin Helms drumming is just fantastic you've got Richard Manuel's heartbreaking vocals you've got Robbie Robertson's guitar Garth Hudson on organ it's just it's just fantastic music so um, yeah thrilled to get that into the collection okay folks i hope you're all well and um i'll be back soon hopefully for more videos enjoying the vc at the moment lots of good stuff going on uh thanks to all uh my new subscribers and old subscribers as well and commenters i hope you're enjoying the channel 
And um, yeah, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.